What is up guys, gals, what are you awesome? Awesome means and gamers of different shapes and sizes that you could be a rectangle, you could be in an L shaker T block. Do you remember the T block in Tetris? You could be like that. Like a but as a crazy like arm waving tube man, have you seen those other like car dealerships? You could look exactly like that. But I want to know how you all are today. Let me know in the comment section below. Would love, love, love to know what games you've been playing this week, this month. Anything that you're looking forward to potentially having Santa bring you for Christmas. Because remember, we're only like a few days, maybe a week or two away from the, the present giving or the, the call sharing as well. Because you never know, you might wake up. You might have been a naughty boy or girl this year. I'm not too sure. But as you can see here, I am bringing you some Darksiders War Mastered Edition today on the PlayStation 4 Pro. And it is so exciting to show you this because as you know... I'm a massive fan of vigil games. Well, games. Dark Side is such an amazing game. I loved it to death. A really cool combination of, say, like, God of War and Zelda and a really amazing art style. Like, one of my original kind of comments about Dark Siders was that the art style is just mere perfection. It is based off Joe Mad's art style, which he actually used for this game, but kind of like he uses kind of like battle chasers kind of art style which is kind of like his actual art style but very battle chasery but in like a brand new world a brand new universe and it's just so nice so colorful and I, I've, I've always loved the kind of like giant hands kind of thing that he does in this game so as you can see like with the, the giant monsters if they're really muscly then everything has like really big hands like big gauntlet hands you know so you're gonna see war in a sec with these giant mitts and obviously it means he's gonna be able to keep himself warm in the upcoming winters and also just to dish out some serious ponies really love the art style. Like, it's that thing as well where because this is actually like a comic book inspired game, it's it, it just bleeds awesome, you know, so much uniqueness, so much personality, but would love to know your comments in the comment section below, your, your opinions, your comments, everything, just, just tell me something about this game that you really liked, didn't like, are you, are you actually excited to see this remastered version on your PlayStation or Xbox or PC? Now, the really cool thing to mention is that this game is really cheap, it is only £15 on Amazon, on game, all those different stores, and that basically means you're paying half price, even under half price, for or, you know, a, a brand new game, and it's all been completely remastered, as mentioned, you've got all these brand new redone textures, it's even been put into 4K, which is really cool, which is something that's kind of interesting, actually, because they didn't do that in the Definitive Edition, I don't believe, which was obviously Dark Souls 2 on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and PC, but I don't believe they did 4K for that, but for some reason, 4K has become this really massive thing, and I think it's because of the PlayStation 4 Pro, and so what you're seeing right now is gameplay on the PlayStation 4 Pro in 60 frames per second, which is really, really cool as well, it's one of those things that doesn't really bug me. Like, I've never kind of like, maybe I'm just really, I don't know, cavemanish. I'm not too sure. My eyes just don't really, I can see the smoothness. Like, this is one of the things, like the frame rate in Dark Siders at the moment is really, really nice, as you can see. Complete, consistent, smooth at 60 frames per second. And it's that thing that in the original, when I played it on PlayStation 3, I just didn't notice it, but it's something that you notice, but it doesn't bug me. You know, I don't think it actually bugs anybody else, but some people really like to have their frame rates really high up, even like on the 120 frames per second scale if you are on PC. But it's just kind of interesting. It's just kind of interesting that that is one of those main features, and it's something that initially would just not have crossed my mind, but it's something that we're getting for free with this game. And also, don't forget, you're all also getting those brand new textures so completely done up, really, really sharp, especially for those 4K resolutions. I like this cop look. This cop's got like mega balls. Those look some serious cojones on that dude. Just shooting war with his little 9mm pistol. It's just, it's pathetic, but at the same time, it's kind of sexy. I mean, I would take him out on a date. But again, the art style, the colors used in this game are really, really nice. And if you've actually seen the gameplay comparisons of the original version and the PlayStation 4 Pro version as well, you will know that the they've actually upscaled, they've actually redone the color palette as well. They've made it even sharper, shinier, but also just more beautiful. Just look at that. Oh, those reds, those blues, the yellows, the oranges yellows, golds, everything just looks so nice and it really pops out of the screen. That is also, again, thanks to that amazing comic book shirt, like, inspired art style. And it's just, it's really, really nice. The gameplay as well is so fluid thanks to that frame rate as well. And so, I've just been having an amazing time while playing. It's been really nostalgic because I remember when this game came out and I was so freaking excited to play it and just, just when I went through it from the start to finish, it was just one of those kind of experiences where I was completely lost in it. Like, I love that kind of thing where 
even though I'm not the biggest fan of Zelda, having kind of like Zelda inspired combat in a world and a story that really kind of clicks with me. Like I love that kind of like heaven and hell kind of like thing going on, like really muscular overpowered dudes, like actual gods in a sense battling. Because remember, you were one of the four horsemen when you're playing this game and it's just like a really epic idea playing as the four horsemen. But obviously like what their original plan was, was to have at least one horseman that you played per game. So obviously the first game which we're playing right now is War, then the second game was Death, which was really really bad too but then we never got strife i believe it's strife and it wasn't pestilence they, they did a different name for it which is kind of interesting and they always teased at, i think it was strife i believe it was strife right with the one with the twin pistols because you always got one of his guns in these games you had the different type of revolver in the second game you also had his original revolver in the first game and it was just kind of a cool idea like teasing the future characters of the series weapons, you know? Like, you even got Death Scythe in this, which was kind of badass. And something to note as well is that you do actually get that pre-order DLC with the War Master Edition because one thing to know is that they didn't really have much DLC when it came to Darksiders Wonder War. I don't actually think there was anything apart from the the Death Scythe, and so it's kind of cool that you do actually get that from the get-go, which is quite nice, so you don't have to worry about losing out on that as well, so it's kind of like with the Definitive Edition, which came with all that original DLC, there was so much DLC when it came to the original Darksiders 2, but with that Definitive Edition, you got all the DLC, with this one, they do also give you that nice little DLC weapon as well, if you actually want to use it, and it was really cool, it was really, really badass, I mean, you did actually get the Scythe, I believe, in the original Darksiders, but you got, like, the special kind of, like, skin for it, and it was just this really cool, like, vibrantly kind of like violet slash purple kind of like scythe and it was just it was just badass it had like it had more exaggeration to the art style of the weapon design and stuff which was kind of cool but again the, the game is just really solid the game is just really really good and if you've actually played this game originally you will know that from beginning to end there were some amazing experiences where you got some really cool enemies you got some really cool characters to meet it even has like mark hamill in it which is really really badass as well so, like, he's actually one of the supporting characters that actually follows War throughout the journey. He's kind of like his his jailer, in a sense. Because, as we already know, the story of Darkseid is all about how War has been summoned. It's the, the apocalypse. Earth has gone to hell, or to some kind of really shizzly type of hell, because, as you can see, there is actually poo on the walls. And why is, why is that stuff that you're climbing? It just looks really gross and really, really weird. But stuff is going down. Heaven, hell, angels and demons are battling each other, and supposedly the only way this is supposed to happen is if the seals are broken. Not actual baby seals. That would be really scary and I would kind of be worried for them because I would do not want Bane just coming in and breaking a bunch of baby seals backs like Batman. You know, that, that is just not very nice. I don't really, I don't condone that kind of stuff. But I'm talking about metallic seals. Now these metallic seals are kind of like a boss each. So I think there's like about six of them, maybe seven. And they all represent like a boss. And so the whole point of the game was that War has been summoned. He's supposed to have his sister and brothers with him as well. And they're supposed to kind of like answer the call of where heaven and hell battle once those seals are broken at a specific time but the seals have not been broken but someone has called him forth and it's kind of brought about this giant apocalypse so in a sense when he gets summoned by these seals getting broken but they haven't so it's this kind of like story about how they kind of like they like got the call and stuff. And I think from spoiler territory, it's kind of like they were broken, but then they were reforged again or something, which is kind of cool. So there's this kind of like massive conspiracy in the game, but I'm not going to tell you who's behind it and stuff like that. That is for you to experience yourself. But really awesome story, and again, really cool characters. And it's this thing as well where there's an amazing immense of pace and progression when you're playing this game. Like, it has that immense kind of Zelda vibe too, where you're going through dungeons, you're getting really cool different gadgets and weapons. I mean, you do stick to using the Chaos Eater, which is the sword that you're seeing here, but you get some really badass, like, other little mini weapons and he gets some cool like tiny little gadgets like he gets like a <laughs> it's kind of cool actually he gets a grapple hook kind of like the one in Zelda it's, it's, it's the funny thing like there are lots of Zelda inspired things in Darksiders but they're used to a really cool kind of like like really kind of like stayed to true kind of like homage kind of like quality which is kind of nice so that it doesn't feel like it's a copy but it's like a really bad copy it's actually like a really good kind of like utilization of those tools that we've seen before in other games but it's just nice like you even have like the portal gun in this game which is kind of cool but you can only use it on specific kind of like actual circular like portal objects but it's still there you know it's like it's the portal gun so they have all these cool things that people have actually loved over the generations of video games well generations been like the consoles obviously like half-life and portal and stuff like that you actually have those kind of weapons 
weapons in this game, these gadgets, but they're just used to a nice effect. And it's really cool as well, you have to use them in boss fights, and the boss fights are amazing. As you can see, there's a combo system in this game. It's very simplistic, very, very welcoming, like, as you already know, with things like, this is where God of War kind of comes in. Like, Zelda's not really known for its combo system or anything like that. It's just kind of like dodge, hack, slash, and, you know, that kind of standard thing, and then dodge, hack, slash, and hopefully the guy dies and you know, or doesn't take your own hearts. I mean, the fact that Link has so many hearts, I'm kind of surprised, but this dude uses a health bar. You know, this guy's legit, original, OG, health bar system kind of guy, and I respect that. You know, he pays his own homage to the older kind of games where they actually had a health system, you know, no regenerative health or anything like that. You actually have to use health potions and steal health from enemies, and so kind of like in Warhammer Space Marine, you know how like in that you have to do like uber kills. It was kind of like a finisher, wasn't it? And yeah, that's how you got your health back, which I thought was kind of cool, like always staying in combat. But in this, it kind of has that, but it also has like the health system as well, like little pots, not pots, but like little green crystals. So again, kind of Zelda-esque. But when it comes to the combat itself, this is where the, the God of War thing comes in. So everybody knows that God of War can be very combo heavy, but in its combo heaviness, it's actually very simplistic, very, very welcoming, very easy for a player to pick up and not have to think, oh my goodness, this is like freaking Mortal Kombat, how am I supposed to press all these buttons? How do I do the freaking finishing move? Up, down, circle, back, forwards, you don't have to do any of those kind of things. No, 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 no. You literally have your standard combo by just tapping square, you actually hold down square as well, you'll do an uppercut just like in God of War as well. If you jump and then hold down square, he'll actually do like a spinning Sonic the Hedgehog kind of like slam dunk as you see me do in this gameplay. And you also have those finishing moves. And look at that, it's so pretty, it's such a colorful game, really, really amazing. And it's just, I just can't get over it. I just can't get over how good this game plays in this day and age, it's just aged really, really well, and it's because it uses those kind of like, not broken, so don't need to fix it kind of like gameplay mechanics that people are so used to, that's, that game developers have always kind of turned to as well to make a really solid game, but also having that really good comic book story and it just works, you know, it just really, really works. But I'd love to know your opinion in the comments section below. What is one of the main features that you really, really love about Darkseid? What is something that you're really looking forward to experiencing again? Because this game came out quite a while ago. I mean, this was back in university when I got this game. And oh, how many years ago was that? Was that like six years ago? Oh my goodness, was it really six years ago that I was at university? That's so crazy that it was like six years ago I was at university. But I played this like non-stop for an entire weekend. Like, it took me a week, and the game's got a really good sense of length to it as well. This is one thing, it's not a short game. It's maybe about, say, about 15 hours long if you, like, go out of your way to, like, check everything out, which is really cool, and that's what you expect when it comes to a single-player experience, I think. And again, because it's 15 pounds, it's just such a steal. It's so, so good. And it's also supported on PlayStation Pro, as mentioned, so it is that thing as well where if you are putting money in that enhanced version of the PlayStation 4, you also have that even more, kind of, like, enhanced experience when it comes to the resolution and stuff because I am actually personally going to be getting a 4K TV hopefully in the future as well and knowing that I have this console that is getting supported by even remasters is really cool like say if you're playing Skyrim if you're playing Darksiders or you know anything at the moment like it's just really cool to know that everything is getting these 4K patches they're really pushing that 4K idea because 4K TVs obviously came out like a while ago like a few years back but there was no really kind of like game that supported it there's this thing of like kind of like thinking, oh well if you have a 1080p game then it's gonna look alright on your 4K television, like it'll obviously be upscaled, but now you actually have those 4K games, like obviously 4K is not truly 4K, it's actually 2000, oh just over 2000 pixels I believe it is, but it's still that kind of thing where it's gonna look sharp, it's gonna look nice on your 4K television, and knowing that we're gonna actually get these remasters that are very kind of like acceptable prices now is really fantastic. I don't know if this is actually because of Nordic, because as you know, Nordic actually purchased the Darksiders franchise, and now this has actually been developed by THQ Nordic. It's really kind of unusual that like, Nordic actually purchased THQ as well, which went completely bankrupt while developing Darksiders and stuff as well. But it's that kind of cool thing that they have actually brought the series back through these remasters, and now hopefully we will actually see them through a sequel. Maybe we'll actually get that Dark Siders free and see the next Horseman. But it's also this kind of interesting thing where you actually have that thing where you want to kind of like go back to War Story now. Like you have War and then you had Death and now it'll be potentially, I don't know, it's, it's definitely Strife and there's another one. And it's not Pestilence, it's definitely not Pestilence, it's something else. They follow the different name, maybe Strife was the different name, it was like Pestilence and then, it's not Decay, is it? I can't remember. But they basically, having the third game, they could have another main character, but I feel like maybe they should actually go back to War. Because it kind of feels like War is the original kind of like character they went for as the poster child. Like, Death had its own kind of like character, kind of like 
poster childiness as well, but it still felt like a side character, you know? It didn't it didn't feel like he had that kind of all to lose like War did. Like War was actually kind of the original guy who got kind of like blamed for the apocalypse, you know? And Death was kind of just like in the background trying to help him, trying to like sort all these things out, which was kind of cool. So the really interesting thing to note is when it comes to the timeline of this game, because it's kind of weird actually, Darksiders 2 is not actually a sequel, it's a prequel, which is kind of weird, right? So where Darksiders actually goes from is, af is, is, this is how I'm gonna explain it. So Darksiders 2 plays after the intro of Darksiders 1, what you're seeing here. So after Darksiders is kind of like, kicks off, that is where kind of like Dark Size 2 starts. And then it actually starts in the middle as well, which well, sorry, ends in the middle as well. So what you're gonna see here is War get completely his ass handed to him and actually die. And then he gets reborn again by the council, which is kind of like his bosses, his managers, and they're about to execute and he kind of says, oh well I'll kind of like figure out what happened and who screwed me over and stuff like that. But how he kind of like undid his death is because of death, because of his brother. So Darkseid 2 actually continues literally here when he gets crushed. And so death comes in and actually ends up like getting war brought back through sacrifice, which is really, really cool. And then that is where Darkseid continues again. So in a sense, Darkseid is Darkseid is free as well, which is kind of weird, don't you think? And the thing to note as well is that by the end of the first Darkseid game, again, we're in complete spoilers territory here, but we all know is that all of the horsemen get brought together at the end of Darkseid. Side as one. So it is this thing as well of that even if they did make a dark an actual legit dark side as free, it feels like you don't actually have to have it as a specific character. They could still go back to war and actually have all his brothers and sisters all together in one game. But also that kind of thing of where they could maybe even mix up the characters. Like it could be, say, like the original, like, not the original, but like the recent. Actually, yeah, you could say the original, like the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I was trying to think of like the most recent one which came out. Was it, it wasn't Out of the Shadows, was it? It was called something else. Was it called In the Shadows? Or was it, was it called Out of the Shadows? Was Out of the Shadows the terrible one? Because you had the one from Platinum Games, and basically what you have is just like the original game, you can actually mix and match with all the Ninja Turtles and like players like a specific one, if you want like Leonardo, Raphael and stuff. And so it's that thing where you could kind of do that with Darksiders, where you could kind of like mix and match. Maybe you could have this thing where it feels a little bit more like, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or say like Streets of Rage in a sense. Not kind of like the 2D thing, but that thing where you could kind of like switch characters, which is kind of cool. So it makes me wonder how they could actually implement having all the horsemen because it it kind of gives me that vibe of, say, like, Dead Space as well. Like, as we already know, there's been Dead Space 1, 2, and 3. And Dead Space 3 ends on a cliffhanger. Like, every single Dead Space has ended on a kind of a cliffhanger. I mean, apart from 1, I mean, no. I mean actually, no. 1 and 2 actually have really good kind of, like, endings where you could kind of, like, walk away from it, I guess you could say. But Dark Side is Not Dark Side. <laughs> I'm getting muddled up with all the Ds. But Dead Space 3 actually ended on a cliffhanger, and it's this thing where everybody wonders if we're actually going to see another Dead Space, you know? Like, it'd be really cool if you got another Dead Space, like, especially on this console generation. That'd be so beautiful, so amazing. Could you imagine a Dead Space on the PlayStation 4 or Xbox One? That'd be so, so good with that updated engine. Oh, so excited just to think about it. Even if they made, like, a Dead Space HD remaster. I'd buy that. I'd buy that in a heartbeat with all three games. Oh my goodness, that would be amazing. But it is this thing where... You know, it ended on kind of like a cliffhanger and people don't actually know if they're going to continue that series anymore because obviously Dead Space 3 didn't really do very well. Like, people didn't like the idea that it was going to go into like an action oriented kind of thing, but they actually kind of like, they did a really good game. I really liked Dead Space 3. I liked all three games. But it is this thing where, like, they've done Darksiders like 1 and 2, but now if they do like another one, is there going to be that support? Is there going to be that kind of like, you know, carrying the end of the stick for consumers who actually want to buy a Darksiders 3 after all this time of not seeing it and always having all these remasters and stuff? And I really hope that they do. I really, really hope that we actually get to see a Darksiders 3, but also that it can actually kind of like bring the players back, bring the fans back into the Darksiders universe and support it and actually fund it so that we actually get to see the the ending of the game, the game series. You can actually do that in the Darksiders 3. Again, if you kind of rushed it, like in a sense of not actually having each horseman have their separate game. Obviously you need four games and maybe a fifth one where they all come together. But by the end of Darksiders 1 you see them all come together anyway. So it's this thing where, I mean, you could just make it out as that, like the other two horsemen aren't that important. But then it kind of feels a bit bad. You kind of, you kind of feel guilty in a sense. Especially if you're playing as those horsemen. You'd be kind of like, you, you didn't get your own game. You, you, just, you just kind of got to get shoveled in there because you, they don't feel very confident that you'd be able to support your own game, you know. It's kind of boring to think about in a sense. But at the same time as that, Darksiders 1 and 2 are amazing and you now have HD remasters of them with all the DLC and 
what is there to complain about? I mean, it's that really cool thing where there's such good stories in their own right that you don't really have to worry about it. It's just so, so awesome. But either way, we have to end this one here. We're actually nearing the end of the story of where I actually come, like recorded it for you. I just wanted to show you the beginning of it. I didn't want to like spoil it or go over like in a massive playthrough or anything like that. Because I do want to review it. I do want to just freaking get into it and just play it. I'm just so freaking excited. This is obviously where Darksiders 1 continues and Darksiders 2 ended. So as you saw there, Death has actually, well, spoilers, Death has actually brought back War, as you can see, from the end of Darksiders 2. And he's now continuing on his journey to try and see who is behind all of this craziness. And it's just awesome. It's just so, so cool. It's so epic. I highly recommend it. And again, it is only £15. And if you do actually have this originally on PC, you do get the remastered version with the 4K support and the 60 frames per second completely free. You get the War Mastered Edition for free on the PC, which is a really awesome idea. It's just a really cool kind of like gesture as well by Nordic have done really well with all the franchises that they purchased. Like they've all been really nicely supported. They've, as you see, they've made them prettier, sharper, really, really good looking. They've just made sure these games can be remembered, but on the next generation of consoles, which is really, really cool. And hopefully we have backwards compatibility in the future consoles as well, because I would love to be able to play these games on 1080p, you know, and 4K in the future console iterations as well, and not have to buy them all again, which a lot of people are worried about. But it is that kind of thing where it's nice to see Darksiders back, you know, after so freaking long. It kind of makes you hopeful that we will actually see a Darksiders 3. Maybe they just had to sell Darksiders 1 and 2 remastered so then they could actually get the funding for a Darksiders 3. But at the same time is that they actually have the engine, they have all of the assets, and so they could just make a Darksiders 3 with what they have and just, like, make some brand new, you know, character stuff. I mean, we do actually have Joe Mad and his team, I think it's Airship Syndicate, actually making a Battle Chasers game at the moment, but obviously they could come back and actually make a Darksiders 3. So so much potential, so much excitement, but it has been me, Josh, aka Normal Proxy, bringing you some Dark Sides today. War Master Edition on the PlayStation 4 Pro. Let me know in the comments section below what you think to it. Would love, love, love to know. And also, don't forget to drop a like if you enjoy this video, and why not subscribe for more gameplay like this in the future. Maybe I will do another Dark Sides video later on or something. I'm not too sure. Don't forget to check out the review when it comes out. But it has been me, Josh, and I will see you all next time. Don't forget as well to let me know what you think to this game, this series. Are you looking forward to it? Do you think it's a bit annoying that it just kind of like borrow from other games like Zelda and God of War? Not too sure, but I'll let you enjoy the last bit of this gameplay, this cutscene. Ciao for now. You had better not bear your teeth. Understand. Or should I teach you to play dead?